Bosco. Bosco down the middle. Then he's got Haysburg down there. Haysburg's got it. He's going to score. Touchdown for Brigham Young. Bosco to Hayward explodes with a minute 37 seconds to go. And Brigham Young from Provo has come back to finally take the lead. What an exciting game to start it for ESPN. In the tradition of the Miracle Bowl of 1980, the Cougars had done it again. Only this time, it was in September, against an Eastern power ranked number three in the nation. Maybe this team had a future. We were fired up about it, and I think going into spring ball, we all felt like we had a special team and we had a chance at a national championship just because of our schedule. We started talking national championship from the beginning. Uh, you know, within the team meetings, the players by themselves. And, uh, and I think if Coach Edwards heard that, he probably would have said, come on, guys, you know, wake up. This is the reality. While the offense provides the thrills, they say defense wins championships. It was no secret that the Cougars' traditionally strong defense enabled BYU to play a wide-open offense. Throughout the 1984 season, it allowed opponents less than 14 points per game and shut them down cold when the game was on the line. All-American defensive back Kyle Morrell, number five, made the greatest one-on-one -on -one defensive play in BYU history in a game-saving goal line stand against Hawaii. I, every time I see it, it's unbelievable. And it's like he said, he said, what difference does it make if I was offside? Because you couldn't have gotten any closer than they were anyway. And, uh, and it's just one of those instinctive things that I've never seen him try it since. Uh, never seen anybody try it since, but it's just one of those spur of the moment decisions that he made and, and it timed out perfectly. He could not have practiced it and timed it out any, any better than, than the way it went. Week after week, the Cougar string of victories grew. The Cougars had not lost a game since the first week of 1983. One could sense a special chemistry within this team. After our team meetings, with the coaches gone, the players would always get together and, and huddle up. And uh, some would either give a prayer or someone would give sort of an inspirational little speech or something like that. Then as the year went on, we, we said, hey, it's not just us, it's the coaches too. This is about four or five games left. And the togetherness that we had on that team was tremendous. But up until then, I never saw that in a BYU football team. Undefeated and untied, it was only a matter of time before BYU was ranked number one. Ironically, it happened after a victory over Utah. We were ranked third. South Carolina was second, and Nebraska was first. Uh, we heard during the game that Navy in a monumental upset had beaten South Carolina. And then as we were finishing the post-game radio show and whatever got word that, that Nebraska had, or Oklahoma had upset Nebraska, stopped them on the one-yard line or something, and that meant now that we were the only undefeated team left in the country. After a perfect season, BYU was voted number one. But outside of Provo, got little respect. When the Cougars took the field against Michigan in the 1984 Holiday Bowl, there was still plenty to prove. The nation wouldn't accept the idea of a whack team playing for the national championship. The Cougars scored early, but suddenly their dream of a championship had turned into a nightmare. Robbie Bosco was carried from the field. A knee injury appeared serious. 
Uh, the doctor came up to me and told me that uh, he had checked Robbie and that uh, it wasn't quite as se severe as they thought, but they had, they had virtually put his leg into a cast. In other words, it had felt splints on it and had it taped up to where, and then a knee brace to where he couldn't, couldn't hardly, like he was stiff-legged. And he said he won't be very mobile, but at least he's not going to hurt the leg. And he said if he, if he can function, then of course you can go ahead and play him. The game meant so much, not only to the team, but to uh, just BYU football. And uh, it meant a lot to me. Um, I didn't want to just give up. I wasn't going to let that stop me from helping us have a chance to be number one. While Bosco's return provided some encouragement, it did little to stimulate the sleepwalking Cougars. It wasn't until BYU trailed 17 to 10 in the fourth quarter that they got their wake-up call. We knew we weren't playing very well, and we knew that we were blowing our own chances to become number one. And we just kind of had to regroup, get ourselves together, and, uh, and you know, go down and do the job. A leaping catch by Glenn Kozlowski tied the score at 17. The Cougars were one drive away from a national championship. We got in a huddle and everybody kind of looked at each other and, and uh, Robbie just said, hey, you know, we, this is it, guys. And uh, one of our team captains, who was uh, Craig Garrick, uh, kind of looked at everybody and says, guys, you know, this is what we've tried for all year. Let's, let's go get it. It took Robbie Bosco less than two minutes to drive the length of the field and set up the winning touchdown. Finally got down to about a third and three, third and four call on about the 15-yard line. As I came back, our main receiver is Kelly Smith. And as he comes out, he's being covered. And then they start putting a big rush on the outside, so I kind of step up in the pocket. I saw Robbie scramble, so I took off running towards him, and then I saw Kelly Smith, who caught the winning touchdown, running down the sideline by himself. And I say, I say to myself, please, Rob, see him throw the ball. Scramble, throws it. In what must be considered the greatest moment in BYU football history, Brigham Young's 1984 National Championship was the ultimate achievement of a program dedicated to excellence and integrity. It was a perfect season and the perfect tribute to all those who struggled for so long to make it possible. would say uh, that BYU is somewhat of a unique place. You know, it isn't like every college, it's not like every campus. I mean, there's a different feeling when you're on campus there. Uh, I just think it's a special place to go and, and spend four years. I can't think of a better place. If I had to do it over again, I would uh, make the same decision. You look up and there's 65,000 people uh, cheering. You know, you look over and you got cheerleaders uh, where you run between them and, and the band, you know, they're playing, and that's a great feeling. And you look up to the right side, and there are the mountains there, you know, past the stands. Uh, you breathe a little bit of that fresh air there. <laughs> championship opened new doors of opportunity for BYU football. 